Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're going to be talking about the blood test that you should get if you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Or put another way, we're going to be talking about Hashimoto's thyroiditis lab test that everyone who has this, this disease or who believes they have this disease should get. Okay, so if you don't know me, I'm Dr. Childs. I'm an internist. I specialize in treating thyroid problems, helping people balance their home hormones, and of course, helping people lose weight. So let's get into our topic today, which as I said, is the topic of Hashimoto's blood tests. Now, why do you care about these blood tests? Um, isn't it true that people who have Hashimoto's have hypothyroidism and don't we just really care whatever is going on with the thyroid? Shouldn't we focus on those blood tests? And the answer to that is true, and we're going to get to those. But what you need to understand if you have Hashimoto's is that Hashimoto's is a completely separate entity, um, and it should be considered to be distinct from that of hypothyroidism. So those people who have hypothyroidism and those people who have Hashimoto's both have thyroid problems. That much is true. But the cause um, and what is the, the underlying mechanism which impacts the thyroid in a negative way is different, or I should say it can be different in both cases. And so it requires a different approach. And I should also point out that most doctors, when they think about thyroid disease and they think about Hashimoto's, they don't really care about diagnosing Hashimoto's. They really only care about diagnosing low thyroid function or high thyroid function. They don't really care what's causing it. So these lab tests give you more information. They allow you to diagnose or at least understand what is happening in your body so that you can target your treatment. That's why these things matter. All right, so let's talk about it. I have, let's see, about nine things here. And these are tests that I think everybody should get who has Hashimoto's. In fact, by the way, I just get these on every patient in general. All of these I'm, I'm getting pretty much on every patient. Now that is because I pretty much see exclusively people who have low thyroid function or, or thyroid related issues. Um, but I still believe if you have regular hypothyroidism, you should get these lab tests. So let's start with number one. Number one lab test, blood test that you need um, is called anti-TPO or which stands for, by the way, anti-thyroid peroxidase antibody. So that's what that TPO means. So it stands for thyroid peroxidase. Um, well, that's what the PO means. And then sometimes you'll see it abbreviated AB, which stands for antibody. That's just a, a way to abbreviate that, that, um, that distinction there. And so what this is really testing for um, in your blood is whether or not your immune system is creating antibodies to a special enzyme found inside of the thyroid gland. So really, if you have elevated antibodies in your blood, they, that is an abnormal sign automatically right off the bat. Your body should not be producing antibodies to its own target tissues. So if you have these elevated antibodies, that is a problem you know, right off the bat, okay? Now, I should also lump this together with the other one, number two, which is thyroglobulin antibodies. So thyroglobulin is different from thyroid peroxidase, but these are both elements and enzymes and proteins found inside of the thyroid gland. Okay, now what's interesting about this is that your thyroid gland should remain protected from the rest of your body. So your immune system really shouldn't come into contact with either TPO or thyroglobulin in something, unless something weird is going on. And so that's why right off the bat, both of these things are very abnormal. You should not see antibodies to your own thyroid gland tissue, proteins or enzymes otherwise, um, at all ever in your body. So the, the fact that these are elevated in any sense and the degree of elevation is not really important here. We're talking about just elevation in general. The degree, any, any elevation of either of these is an abnormal sign right off the bat and may indicate that you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis or just regular autoimmune thyroiditis or just indicate that your body's attacking your thyroid gland. Let's just distill it down to that. That's probably the easiest way to think about it. So antibodies bad, they should not be elevated at all. And these are the two most important things that you should check for the diagnosis of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Now there are other antibodies. You don't need to worry about those because those are more specific to Graves. But for Hashimoto's, you need to know these two things and you have to get these tested. Okay, so number one and number two are both antibodies. Now you let's not get into the specifics of what these these proteins and enzymes do because I don't think it's really important for you to understand right now. Um, just realize they should never be elevated and that's very abnormal if they are. Number three and number four, both are important tests, but they test for something different. And so remember in the very beginning when we started this conversation, I said that people who have Hashimoto's are a little bit separate or, or distinct from those people who have regular run of the mill hypothyroidism. And part of the reason for this is that these individuals who have Hashimoto's have an immune dysfunction component to their thyroid problem, okay? So let me back up and just explain that. I said before that if these antibodies are elevated, that means your own body is attacking your thyroid gland, right? And that, that is mediated by your immune system. So if you have 
uh, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, you have an immune problem. And if you have an immune problem, you generally have an inflammatory problem because the, Im the inflammatory system and the immune system are linked together. It's just something you should be aware of. But here's where things get kind of cool. You can actually check for the status of inflammation in your body by ordering two tests. And those tests include the ESR, which stands for erythrocyte sedimentation, right? You don't have to remember that. Most people, most doctors just abbreviate it ESR. The other test that you can look for is called CRP or C-reactive protein. These are very standard inflammatory tests that almost all doctors will be aware of. I should, I, you know, all doctors know these tests, okay? Just, you learn this in medical school. It's not, it's very basic sort of stuff. But what these tests tell you is if you get them and they come back high, they tell you that inflammation is present in the body. And if you have inflammation as well as elevated antibodies, you know that something is causing your immune system to be revved up and that's causing your immune system to produce antibodies to your thyroid gland and those antibodies are attacking your thyroid gland and causing damage. But you can test for this inflammation and I think it's a really good idea to do this because what it tells you is how inflamed your entire body is. So there are some people who have elevated antibodies, which are mildly elevated, um, and those, el those antibodies can spike in the setting of high levels of inflammation, which can come and go. So your inflammatory levels can kind of you know, go like this all the time. And if you eat unhealthy foods or if you have periods of stress, they'll spike up really high, which will cause your antibodies to go up, and then that'll cause damage to your thyroid gland. So you can kind of see how this is all working together and is important. Now, certain things that you can do can bring those antibodies low and keep them low. And you need to figure out as you do this what those triggers are that cause your your antibody or cause your inflammatory markers to become elevated and do the opposite. Okay, and I have videos and all sorts of things that, that help you do this. But this is why you care about ESR and CRP. CRP, you can also get something called HSCRP, which stands for high sensitivity CRP. Um, one is a little more specific and a little more um, nuanced. So, so, but just get AECRP. We'll just leave it at that for now. Um, but realize that there are at least a couple different types of CRPs. Um, but try to get the general CRP if you can. And again, that stands for C-reactive protein and ESR stands for erythrocyte sedimentation rate. And both are markers of your inflammation levels. High levels are bad in this setting. You do not want your ESR, ESR high and you do not want your CRP high. The next one that you want to get is vitamin D. You want to be checking your vitamin D status. All people should really be doing this, but it's, this is especially important if you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, um, which is the autoimmune disease um, where your own body's attacking your thyroid gland. Why? Because vitamin D levels, I should say low lot levels of vitamin D have been associated and linked to increased risk of developing all types of autoimmune diseases, including Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So why does this matter? Well, what if you check your vitamin D level, you have all these other things that are elevated, you find that your vitamin D level is low, what information does that give you? It gives you the opportunity to treat that low level, okay? So by treating it, you might be able to improve your immune system, which would therefore help drop your inflammation and drop your antibodies. So this is all linked. This is why, hopefully this is all making sense. It's all coming back together. But get that vitamin D level checked. Most doctors, I think the last statistic I looked up was something like, 30% of the world's population is vitamin D deficient. It could even be higher. I'm just going off the top of my head, but that was one of the last statistics that I read. And I don't even know that I'm in, in if I've ever checked anybody who has thyroid condition, I've always found that they have low vitamin D levels unless they're already supplementing. So if you don't know what I'm talking about and you've never had your D level checked, get it checked because there is a very high chance that it is going to be low and not just a little bit low, probably very low unless, as I said, you are supplementing. So that's a very thing, important thing to test for. Now the next, let's see, number, let's see, we have four things down here. These tests all focus on addressing or testing your thyroid function. So remember the first one, two, three, four, five tests didn't even talk about addressing thyroid function. We talked about addressing or how to test for your immune status, how to test whether or not your, um, your immune system was producing antibodies to your thyroid, your inflammatory levels, and of course, nutrients which help impact the system. Now we're getting into the tests which help evaluate what is known as thyroid function. And really what these tests tell you is whether or not your thyroid gland is actually working. Which, by the way, if your thyroid gland is not working, that's what causes you to feel really crappy, okay? When your thyroid gland is suppressed or low, or you have a low functioning thyroid gland, or you have what's called hypothyroidism, that's the thing that causes increase in weight, low energy, hair loss, uh, cold, cold intolerance, depression, anxiety. I mean, we could go on and on and on here. But low thyroid function causes all these things. Now, what most doctors will do is they'll jump right to, to these tests. Well, maybe they'll jump to this test, perhaps. Probably they won't touch on these other ones, which is why we have to talk about them today. 
But this is only, I want you to realize as the person listening to this, this is only one small part of testing for all the things that you should be looking at if you have Hashimoto's, but it is important. So that's why we're talking about it. The first test is TSH. Now, most doctors and most patients are aware of the TSH. In fact, if you're seeing an endocrinologist or a family practice doctor, this is probably the only test you, you're getting. In fact, if I had to guess, I would guess most of you listening to this are probably, out of all the nine tests here, are only getting the TSH. So you can see the problem. You're leaving a lot of information on the table. Some of you may, yeah, get the free T4 in addition to the TSH, maybe a vitamin D level, but probably not these antibodies and probably not the inflammatory markers. So what does the TSH tell you? Well, here's the problem with TSH. Normally, doctors are using the TSH to look exclusively at the thyroid in its entirety. Now, that's a problem for a lot of reasons. I'm not going to talk specifically about that. But what I want you to know today is that it's possible for you to have a normal TSH, but still have low thyroid function in the setting of autoimmune thyroiditis or Hashimoto's. Okay, so what this means is that the TSH does not track well as a marker of thyroid function because of all the other things that we talked about here. So these inflammatory markers decrease thyroid function. You can have some permanent damage done to your thyroid gland as a result of the elevation of these antibodies. And even in the presence of all this, the TSH can still remain somewhat normal, okay? So what ends up happening to a lot of patients who have Hashimoto's, especially if they're only getting tested for the TSH, they'll look at the TSH and their doctor will say, hey, everything is normal by the, everything's normal. I know that you have fatigue and I know you've been gaining weight and I know all these things are happening to you, but your TSH is normal, therefore you are normal. So the reason that we want to get these other tests is because I'm telling you now that the TSH cannot be used as the sole marker or diagnostic marker of hypothyroidism if you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis because there's discordance between the, um, the TSH and thyroid status. That's, that's a lot of, you know, maybe mumbo jumbo to you. So if that's not making sense, just realize you have to order the rest of these tests that we're talking about. You can't just look at the TSH. Okay, so, the, so these other two things that I want you to become familiar with in terms of testing thyroid function include free T3 and free T4. Now, these are markers of the amount of free thyroid hormone that is floating around in your blood. This thyroid hormone is more important than the TSH because it represents what your body can actually use. And when we talk about testing hormones, we are always talking about testing the amount of free thyroid hormone that, or not free thyroid, but free hormone in general that exists in your body. So let me give an example. If you wanted to check to see how much estrogen was in your body, does it make sense to order the pituitary hormone or does it make sense to look at the estrogen levels in your body? Of course you want to look at the estrogen levels in your body. You would want to look at that over the FSH or the LH, which are the equivalent of the TSH in your brain. So you should become accustomed to ordering these free thyroid hormone levels because that's really what you're looking at. You care about how much free thyroid hormone is in existence because low levels of three, these, the, any free thyroid hormone will result, result in those low thyroid symptoms we talked about previously. So be accustomed to, be, just get used to ordering free T3 and free T4. Now, the other one that I want you to get used to ordering is called reverse T3. And the reason is simple. So remember when I said TSH is not the best way to diagnose um, thyroid conditions, especially in people who have early Hashimoto's to let's say moderate Hashimoto's. But a more sensitive way of testing that is by looking at the difference between free T3 and reverse T3. Now I realize this concept might be new to some of you, so if it is, I have videos which explain this in detail, but I want you to understand this, this basic idea. Sometimes it takes about until you get moderate disease for the TSH to finally start elevating. And then that way when you look at it, you go, oh, okay, I get it. You know, Finally, your TSH is at some level and now we can diagnose you with thyroid disease. But the free T3 will start to drop earlier than the TSH will, and the reverse T3 will start to increase earlier than the TSH will start to rise as well. So you can look at the difference between these two lab values, and it will give you information as to the status of your thyroid function. Now, I know that might have been getting a little bit in the weeds, but just realize there's more to testing your thyroid um, than just the TSH. And you should, be, you should understand that you want to be looking at the TSH, free T3, free T4, reverse T3, and all of these other tests that I talked about previously. And in my opinion, this represents really the, the basic lab test that you should get if you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So I want to, I want to ask you guys a question. So respond in the comments if, you, if you've had all these tests before. So is this something that you've gone through? You know, when you've gone to see your doctor, have you had all these testing done? And if you haven't, tell me which ones you did get and which ones that you still need to get. Because I think you'll find that as you get these more complete lab tests, you'll have more complete information, which can then help you 
um, to get on the right treatments and to start feeling better and so on. So uh, that's all I have for you for this video. But by the way, make sure if you haven't already that you go down below, you download my free thyroid PDF resources. I have a bunch of resources that are really helpful to those people who have thyroid conditions, including Hashimoto's, including those people who have had their thyroid removed. So if you haven't downloaded those, I'd recommend that you go do that and leave your questions below. And otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one.